In this video, we'll show you why the Matrice M400 and the L2 LiDAR is your ultimate mapping combo. With the L2 LiDAR, you can map any terrain and it will give you survey grade results. If you like what we do at Some Survey Instruments, make sure to subscribe to our channel, give us a like and turn on all your notifications. In this terrain that we're about to map, there's a lot of trees, thick bushes and also thick vegetation, which means that a normal camera would have never given us the true ground results and therefore we have chosen the L2 LiDAR. This beast of an L2 packs 5 returns which means that you will always get true ground results. Why the M400? Well, let's be honest, it's got super payload capacity, super long endurance, super strength and I mean just look at it, it's a super drone. So let's power up the M400 and the controller and get this bad boy up in the air. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is to connect your base station. So let's first make sure that the Wi-Fi is connected. As you can see, it's connected to the RS3 Plus and now it's connected. So let's go into our camera view. As we can see, our drone is already connected and it has reached centimeter or actually millimeter accuracy, which means uh, our RTK is definitely correct. Let's go to the route. So we'll do an area route. So we'll create our mapping area. Once we are satisfied with the area, we can click on the correct mark and then you, you will automatically see that the controller has selected the matrix for with the L2 LiDAR which it has recognized automatically and then we can go into either photogrammetry mode or LiDAR mapping mode and here we can enter the payload settings so current the return mode is single we want that on Penta and the scanning mode should be repetitive sampling rate is fine 240 uh, RGB coloring, we want the point to be colorized, and that's it. So, over here, the method of mapping is not going to be oblique, it is actually just going to be ortho. And we will then create our root altitude. Alright, over here we can see our IMU calibration is on and the speed at which we'll be we're able to map is 25 meters per second but we will not map at that speed we will rather map at closer to the 10 meters per second or even 8 meters per second range our course angle is correct and here in our advanced settings we can actually see the side lap and the overlap so the side lap should never be less than about 30 percent and over here we can see it's about 37 percent forward lap is good enough all right we're not going to set the, the starting point because it's already set on the place or the point nearest to me which is exactly what i want I'm happy with the settings. I will now click on save. And over here I can see my mapping area, the GSD of the area that I'm going to be mapped, the distance that the drone will travel and the duration of the flight. And the amount of photos it will take is about 73. Once we're happy, we'll click on the play and then we'll just make sure that everything is correct. upload the mission and over here there's an option of de-warping we're going to keep that off because we're not interested in taking the most beautiful pictures we're actually interested in using the camera as part of the mapping so we'll upload the flight and then once the flight is uploaded we can now click on start
So the flight went perfectly, we're back in the office. Let's look at the accuracy of the DJI M400 with the L2 LiDAR. Let's open up DJI Terra, locate the data, and we'll show you step by step how we get to the final results. Once you're at the main screen, you go to create a project, and there you have a few options. We're gonna go to LiDAR Point Cloud. We're gonna give it a name and just say LiDAR L2 SOM Test. Click on OK, and then we go to the data set, select the folder. Great, we have selected the folder. And don't stress if you see there's a bit of red with the, with the green mixture. Um, it just means that the RTK wasn't fixed um, by the time we took off on the flight, but it, just, it managed to regain a fix a bit later. You can see the RTK status here at the, at the top. Red is obviously poor, uh, orange is good, and obviously green is excellent. That's what you want to have in all of your flights. So the, we're going to use control point optimization and see if with the GCP that we've still plotted here um, still gets to a good result at the end. All right, so this is the base station settings. Let's go in there. And over here, we are just going to make sure that we select the correct coordinate system. So we use RTBS hook, we're in LA29. And over here, you can also see that DJI Terra actually created a base coordinate already, which is a local base system. We're not going to edit that, um, but that is fine because our GCPs are also on the same system. We're going to click on save. All right, so and then under the processing, we're going to select a template called general. And then the pre-processing uh, of the scene is obviously point cloud. So we're going to have point cloud processing. Uh, we don't have a separate LiDAR calibration file, so we're going to keep it there. And then the control and checkpoints. And then we're just going to say import GCPs. Right, go back to the LiDAR points. Open it up. Just going to make sure that the separator is correct. And here we can see that uh, everything is defined correctly. Comma separates it correctly. So we're just going to change these. So this is... Uh, and then our vertical datum, we're going to have the South African Joid added. We have that as Easting, Northing, and then Z or the eleva elevation of the GCP points. We're going to import them. Okay, so we have imported our GCPs. Let's go back and continue setting the LiDAR processing parameters. Over here, everything looks fine, the detection range. We're going to keep the optimized accuracy. Obviously, we want the data to be as accurate as possible. We're going to also keep the smoothing factor active. Then going to our point cloud, the density, 10 centimeters per pixel. We're going to bring that down to about, let's say, one centimeter per pixel. Or the one, every one centimeter um, that we have an actual LiDAR point. This will just make it easier when we actually check our GCPs in terms of accuracy so that we can get as close as possible to the, to the center of the GCP. All right, and then our point cloud format. Over here, we can select the different formats of output. We're going to just keep the last point cloud active. And then over here, you can merge the outputs. This is just from multiple flights. If you want to merge the data into one, you can select this to do that. We don't have multiple flights since this was a very small area. And then point cloud classification. We're gonna put that on um, and maybe just look at the ground type. So we want the point cloud to be classified. It was fairly flat. Um, yeah, but because it's a bit bushy, we're gonna keep it on a gentle slope. We're going to keep it to the default parameters. Don't change anything much there. We want a 2D map, obviously. The 3D mesh, we're not too concerned about that. Uh, the digital elevation model, we're going to keep that unticked because we just want to verify the actual accuracy of the survey. Contour lines, we're also not interested. And that's it for the parameters. 
that we have to set in DJI Terra. And once we're happy, we can click on Start Reconstruction. And over here, it just shows you the parameters checklist and we're happy with what you have selected and we can go ahead and click on OK. And then at the bottom, you can see that the reconstruction is in progress. So let's have a look at the data once it's finished. Okay, great. So DJI Terra is finished processing. And uh, as you can see, it says the reconstruction is complete. So let's go ahead and look at the data. That's it. As you can see, there's a lot of data that we managed to capture just by making use of the multiple return data. Underneath this tree, you can see there's the ground. And that is exactly why you use the LiDAR to capture data because photogrammetry only gives you the top-down view. Whereas with this LiDAR, you're able to penetrate the vegetation and actually get true ground results. So once your point cloud has been processed, this is a typical display that you'll get. Then you can verify your data through intensity. And again, just go through it with different views. And you get your height map. And this is your actual return data. So currently we can see that there is only one return on, on the blue and then here is where the magic happens over here you can actually see the different returns so you can see light blue you can see red you can see yellow and that allows you to get true ground data So from the top, you wouldn't think that there was a reason why you could have used LiDAR. But the moment you zoom in, that's when it really counts. Great. And then this is the last one. Over here you can see the actual true ground, it just gives you a different type of representation on the data. Right, so I think let's jump into the accuracy verification of the data and see just how accurate DJI Terra has managed to process this data. All right, so first thing I think let's just view the actual quality report. Okay, and here we can actually see what the time, what time it took us to actually collect the data. So it was about four minutes and the software processing was done in about 10 minutes. Over here you can see the parameters that we used for the actual point cloud. Our output coordinate system is displayed there. The LiDAR Calibration of the IMU parameters is displayed here as well. And our scan mode obviously was repetitive that we have selected in the field. It's just our PC specs, opposition status, um, based on optimization, it was 100% fixed. And over here we can see our IMU trajectory. Alright, and over here we can see our point cloud control error. And uh, we can see that 
The average altitude difference was about 11 mils. The minimum altitude difference was about 15 mils. And then the maximum altitude difference was about 37. And bringing the absolute value of altitude difference to about 16.7 millimeters, or just let's just call it 16 millimeters. And then on our control points over here, obviously we've got the different GCPs that we have placed that we are using for, ver for verification. And here we can see what the altitude difference on point one was. 0 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. So over here we can also see that 0 0.2 was the was the biggest. The rest of them were pretty close: 6 moles, 14 moles, 15 moles, 8 moles. It's just that 0 0.2 was a little bit higher, but it still brings our total accuracy to be within tolerance that we expect it actually to be. Then going further on the quality report. Here's just a basic preview of the site. And then the scene overlapping, how the data actually overlapped. Here is the DSM preview that we also showed you on the tabs at the bottom, going through the different LiDAR displays. And our output parameters, um, it's just basically the data that we have received at the end of the day. Great, so we've showed you exactly how to process in DJI Terra. Stay tuned for more content.